Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's Tools, Tips, and Talk, where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, I'm excited to finally bring you guys a PID controlled forge and how to do that. What's a PID controlled forge? Basically, we're gonna get a computer to control the temperature of this forge to within 20 degrees. It's gonna be as accurate as my heat treating oven. That's what we're gonna to do today. Show you guys how to build it for around between 100 and 150 bucks, depending on what kind of forge you have and what kind of setup. So let's go take a look and I'll talk about all of the things you need for this build. Before we get into it, why do you want this? Why do you want a forge that's that accurate? Well, for anyone that has ever tried to do 1095, uh, which requires a soak time, it's very hard to get a, a forge just to stay at the same temperature uh, without some kind of computer controlled um, facility. Uh, also, if you're doing things like copper Damascus or other non-ferrous metals where you can't have it at forge welding temperatures, you need to hold it at 1800 degrees or 1700 degrees, uh, very useful. Um, the last couple kumais that I did uh, ended up failing. So uh, I wanted to install this in my forge to have some really, really good accuracy. So the first thing you're gonna need is a PID, which is a Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. <laughs> That's just a fancy term for something that um, lets you plug in a probe, uh, which is you're gonna put in the forge. It's gonna be sending temperature to the PID, the computer, and the computer is basically just gonna send a, uh, a current to a switch, which is gonna turn on the gas if it's lower than the set point. And um, once it gets higher than the set point, it's gonna turn off the gas. So it's this turning on and off of the gas, which is what's gonna control your forge. So the first thing you're gonna need is a PID. So um, everything that I'm gonna talk about, uh, there are links down in the description. Uh, there's a bunch of links. One of them is to Forge Building Tools. That's um, one, of the, one of the sections in my Amazon store. All of the pieces you need are in that uh, category in my Amazon store. So I'd appreciate it if you go use those links. The channel does get a little kickback at no cost to you because um, those are Amazon affiliate links. So please use the links. Go check those out down in the description. So here's the first one you need. So this, um, I think it's around 40 bucks. Uh, this PID controller comes with a, a solid state relay, okay, which is the other thing, and a heat sink, because the solid state relays, those can get a little warm, so they sit on top of heat sinks. So I kind of explained how the PID works. Um, it's the solid state relay. Think of a solid state relay just like a switch that's controlled by a current, which lets a computer turn a switch on and off. That's all the solid state relay is. So these three come in a package, buy them all together. That's great. Um, next thing you're gonna need is a thermocouple. A thermocouple is the sensor that you're gonna put inside of your forge or poking into your forge. Uh, there are many different kinds of thermocouples. Uh, for forges, you need at least a K-type thermocouple. And I have a link to a K-type th thermocouple in the, um, in the links, and here it is up here. Uh, I actually prefer this S-type thermocouple. Uh, it's encased in ceramic. It's just a little tougher. Uh, it's about three bucks more expensive, um, and it will last longer, so I suggest you get it. Um, they have the same temperature rating. This particular S-type thermocouple will only go to 30, 2300 degrees, which is fine um, uh, unless you're doing something crazy at super high temperatures. This is what you need. The thermocouple will um, plug into the PID. I'm gonna show you guys the wiring diagram later, um, but the thermocouple is gonna be sending temperature to the PID and that's what it's gonna um, gauge. The other thing we're gonna need to control the flow of gas is a solenoid. Uh, and what we want is an AC current, here it is up here, an AC current normally closed solenoid. So what that means is if you're not feeding a current to this solenoid, it, it's not passing anything through it. It's basically the valve is closed. When you're passing current to it, the valve opens. So 
That's what our, our uh, solid state relay is going to do. When it wants to heat up the forge, it's going to open the, thermo, uh, the solenoid. Uh, many of you that have a forced air, um, a forced air um, forge may already have a solenoid. And this would be the solenoid that you probably already have. So you may not even need to purchase this. Um, you, depending, we're going to get into later optimizations, you may actually want a second one. So, so we'll see. So these being the really basic pieces, I want to show you uh, the wiring of this thing. Um, just the really basics, no switch, no other extra switches or anything. We're going to do kind of two more improvements on this in this video, but let's just get the basics down and I'll show you the wiring diagram. So let's go take a look. So let's take a look. There's the forge. There's where I've got the PID. And you can see it's all plumbed here. Um, we'll talk about the plumbing in a little bit. We'll also talk about the, uh, the extra switches that I've added. And you can see there's the PID just uh, locked into the front. There's the solid state relay. Um, and then the solenoid, which is here, is just plumbed up through the bottom. So here's the wiring diagram. First off, here's the power. Remember that AC power doesn't really have a positive or negative, so we just have two leads coming off it. So they come off going into the box, which is this white area. We've got them going into 9 and 10 on the PID. Also, that power goes to the solid, solid state relay on 1 and 2. So when the solid state relay connects, it's going to connect the power between 1 and 2. Then these two circuits are just going to continue to the solenoid. The PID is going to control the solid state relay by 6 and 8. And that's just two wires. There's a positive and a negative wire going between 6 and 4 and 3 and 8. Lastly, the thermocouple is going to be wired to 3 and 4 on this PID. And that's just take the wire that comes with the thermocouple and um, feed it out of the box to your thermocouple. This is just the basic wiring. We haven't added any switches. We're going to add that later. And also, when you're testing this, uh, I suggest you don't test it with gas and a solenoid. Uh, I tested it with a, a light bulb uh, and a lamp uh, in order to know that power was going to the solenoid correctly. The only setup you're going to need to do on the PID is to make sure you have it set to the right type of thermocouple. If you do use a type S thermocouple, you will have to set that because the default is a type K. Just reference the instructions on the PID for how to set that. To test the thermocouple, I was just using a propane torch and just firing it on the thermocouple and having it register the temperature. So let's take a deeper look at the plumbing. Some of this I'm going to talk about later. So let's just ignore this part and this solenoid. So we've got the gas coming in. It's going to go to a solenoid here, which is plugged into our PID, which is going to go to a needle valve. And this is for our, you know, our master control kind of thing into the gas. This part and the other solenoid, let's just hold off on that. I'll talk about it later. Uh, just a little bit on the thermocouple. So this is the uh, S-type thermocouple. You'll notice it's completely encased in uh, ceramic, uh, even the end, um, which is what I wanted. I just took a little piece of hard fire brick, um, and you'll see why when I get in. It was I wanted this poking into the forge just a little bit, and this much brick was actually just perfect for me. So um, I just set this in. I drilled a hole in my forge right here. And then this just sits in right there. Uh, let's take a look inside and I'll show you how far this protrudes. Okay, so there you can see the solenoid poking out there. Um, it's in the forge maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Uh, and that's exactly where I uh, kind of stack my, um, I put my, my work, especially when I'm doing Damascus. So it's exactly the, where I want. Uh, it's not within the flow of the gas. So the gas is hitting the back wall and then swirling up. So that's pretty much where I want the solenoid. Okay, so that's the basic wiring of this. Now let's see it in action and see what this does in the forge. So I'm gonna set my PID 
to something like 1700 degrees and you'll see the gas go on and off. And we're gonna talk about how we're gonna improve this a little bit right after. Okay, so we've got the Ford set at 1800 degrees. Uh, it's almost climbing up to there. So I'm gonna open it up and you're gonna see how the flames are gonna kick off and then reignite in about 10 degrees. So here we go. Now they're off and now they're back on. And you can see how the temperature dropped quite a bit. Now the forge isn't totally up to temperature yet, um, so it dropped a lot. But uh, as it gets a little hotter, it'll be a little more accurate. And here you'll see it's gonna kick off again in a second. So it, it dropped about 50 degrees. And it'll get more and more accurate, but only to a point. Okay, that was pretty cool. You saw how the gas went on and off as the solenoid kicked on and off and it was uh, kind of hovering around probably 60 to 75 degrees of the set point. Um, now you can imagine, you know, that, that accuracy is pretty good for a forge, um, but there's some issues with this. So we're feeding, because this is a forced air forge and the, the fan is always on, when the gas kicks off, all this do is feeding air into that forge which is causing scale and, and it's really cooling down the forge as the air goes into it. Um, so how do we make this better? So what we're gonna do is add a gas bypass. So around the, um, the solenoid, we're gonna put just a little U and I'll show you a, a diagram of the plumbing of this after. We're gonna add um, a, little, a little U around it with a needle valve. So, uh, and this is thanks to Rodney, um, I forget his last name on Instagram, but thank you Rodney for the suggestion. Um, we're gonna turn the needle down, needle valve down to say 25%. So in normal heating mode, when the solenoid is getting power, it's gonna get 100% of the gas, the gas that I've set, uh, based on the pressure coming out of your, out of your rec. Um, but then, when the solenoid is off, it's going to be going around the solenoid and through a needle valve, which now I can set to say 25% or 50% of the gas. So instead of the gas going on and off, it'll be at 100%, 50%, 100%, 50%. And there's a couple of things that that does. Um, number one, of course, you'll be much more accurate because the forge isn't going on and off and it's not blowing cold air into your forge. Number two, you don't have this ignition problem because it's always getting gas. So you don't have to worry about is the forge hot enough to, um, to ignite the gas because it's always getting a little bit of gas. Okay, and number three, you're not, you're, you're not at a point where you're just feeding air. So you're reducing the scale formation because you are igniting that gas, it's not just air. So really, really cool um, upgrade. So now let's take a look at this with about, I don't know exactly, 30, 30, 40% 30, of the gas going around with the needle valve. And I'll show you the plumbing on this first and, uh, and then we'll do the same test and you'll see the difference um, in the accuracy. So now we'll take a deeper look at um, the bypass. So uh, same switch, now there's a solenoid because the gas can always be flowing. For safety reasons, I put another solenoid in case the power ever goes out uh, and the fan dies, it will kick off this master solenoid and shut off all the gas. Uh, so this is wired into the main power switch. So now we've got a bypass here, which is just teed off of here with a needle valve. And note, you can't do another straight pipe here because you can't get all these plugged in together. So I had to put a little compression fitting with just a piece of copper tube here, um, just because these swivel. Um, if you try to 
wire these or plumb these together, you just can't. So you need some kind of compression fitting on one end. Uh, so this goes around this solenoid um, and I can control this. Then elbowed and then the master switch as well. So that's how the bypass, the gas bypass works. So now we're doing the same test as before, but with the needle valve at about 30%. And you'll see how the flames just change. Okay, it's on full, and now it dropped. And you can see the difference in the heat. Now it's only dropping at max about 20 degrees, if at all. So there it dropped 15 degrees and that's all. You could also make your set point 1805 degrees or 1810 and then it'll go from about uh, 1790 uh, to about 1805. Yeah, see now it's dropping barely under 1790. That's pretty incredible. Now we've got a heat controlled forge that's as accurate as a heat treating oven. Very exciting. So now you can really dial in the heat control on your forge. So let's talk about a couple other uh, little improvements, basically just to the wiring. So I showed you the basic wiring before, uh, but now I'm going to uh, add a couple of things. So I wanted a main power on off switch, which would turn on the PID, which would also turn on the fan for my forced air, because uh, I didn't want to have to control those separately. So I have one main power switch that turns everything on. Next is the one downside to this cheap PID is that its maximum set point is 1999 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you wanted to forge weld, uh, as soon as the forge got up to 2000 degrees, it's going to kick off. And yes, I could open the needle valve all the way, but I didn't want to have to mess with that. So I had another switch, uh, which is a little bypass switch that will kind of jump over the um, solid state relay and it will always give power to the solenoid. So in that mode, the solenoid is just is open all the time. Uh, so when I'm forge welding, I don't want to have, basically I'm not temperature controlling the forge when I'm in bypass mode. And, uh, and that's great because I can still see the temperature in the forge, um, which is great because I love to know, you know, how hot is the forge when I'm forge welding, but it's not going to try to control it. So that's a great little upgrade and really simple. And it's a $4 switch, so that's great. Here's the updated wiring diagram. I've added a master switch here, which controls the power going into the PID. Also, I'm showing the fan here, and it controls the power to the master solenoid. I'm also showing a ground wire because my fan actually has a ground. Um, so if you have a ground, then just um, bolt it to uh, the stand or something like that. Just make sure it goes into the, into the ground. And then I put the bypass switch, which just bypasses um, one and two on the uh, solid state relay and just connects that circuit. Okay, big thanks to uh, Rodney and also to Jason Vliet, uh, who gave me the original parts list for this. So thanks guys, you helped me out a lot on this build. Um, and everyone definitely check out the, uh, and, and try a, a, a PID controlled forge. It lets you dial in your forge precisely. Uh, I'm not saying it replaces your heat treating oven because certainly it won't, but you come really close. And for like the basic mode of this is about a hundred bucks. If you want to do the gas bypass, uh, it's just a little more in, um, in brass fittings. So you're probably looking at 150 to $175 um, if you want the gas bypass, which I think you really do. So for 175 bucks, you've got a beautiful computer controlled forge. Thanks guys for joining me. I hope you got something out of today's build. Go check it out. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please do go check that out. Give this video a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.